Hello everyone. I am here today with my dad, Gary. Hi. And we are in his shed and this is a really special event because dad today is going to show how you can make one of these beautiful Danish dough whisks. Dad made this for me a few years ago and since then I've had a contact from people every now and then because I've showed it in some of my videos wondering how to make it and um, whether or not he would make more and sell them but he's not interested in that neither am I but we were both thought it might be a good idea to show people how to do it because a lady just recently got in touch yeah. with me and she was really keen to know how to make one so that's what we're going to do I hope you enjoy it we'll get started okay welcome right. to the shed <laughs> <laughs> yeah Right, the first thing to do, I think, is to make the handle. Um, and I'm using all basic materials. You should be able to buy any hardware store. Um, the wooden handle is basically just three quarter inch dowel or 20 millimeter. Uh, and you need a bit about 12 inches or 300 long. The ferrule that makes sure that the handle doesn't split is a piece of old three quarter inch copper water pipe. We'll cut that and trim it up and get it ready. So the ferrule is the bit that goes around the The ferrule top. is the bit. This bit here is the ferrule. Oh, yeah. And its its purpose is, you know, when you're putting pressure on this, it'll split the wood if you haven't got uh, that band yep. to hold it all together. So here, here's an old bit of three-quarter inch dowel, which will do just nicely. Is I'm just going to show you a few little tricks to make it easier for you to do things. For example, when you're cutting a bit of this stuff to length, not many people can saw through a bit of stuff and end up with it straight. But if you've got a little vise, which is pretty well essential, just put it in with the cut level with the end of the vise and use the vise as a cutting gauge. Your hacksaw does a nice smooth job. You see, you just sit the, the blade up against the jaws of the vise. Yep. <laughs> And it acts as a guide. It acts as a guide. You know, it's square. So clever. And easy. Yep. Nice, square. The next thing we've got to do with the wood is make the end smaller where the ferrule's got to fit. Make the ferrule about roughly 20 mil long. So we'll put a mark on there at 20 mil and once again use the vice trick line up where you want to make it smaller to with the jaws in the vice and then grab some kind of a file is usually a good thing Now, if you've got exotic things like a lathe or anything, you can use anything. This is really just the simplest, most basic tools you need to make a good one. Yep. Most people have got a vise or and a file, and you know this is a yeah. simple way to do it. And then you just keep rotating that around the vise. You don't have to be too scientific, you just file, file it down. So you just keep you working, just keep your way, working your way around. How much do you take off? Like well, a couple of mil or? Depends on the on the pipe you use. The, this yeah. water pipe that um, we've got is probably a bit over a millimetre, and I, I'm just guessing. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll try. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And if 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 you need a bit, if more. that looks like it's going to fit on, even though it's you want it a tight fit. Yeah. yeah. So take less off to start with, and then yeah, yeah, just work it and. And one of the natural things that happens while you're doing this, you will nearly always file more off here than here. Yeah. 
But that's a big convenience because it gives you a tapered thing to make it easy to fit the, yeah. the ferrule on. So don't worry too much. Yeah. This handle, while I, I've said quarter inch dowel, you can use anything you like really. You could use a handle off an old wooden spoon or a, a branch off a tree, you know. It doesn't matter. If you want to get uh, artistic, you just go with wh whatever you want to do. Because the only, only bit that uh, matters is, is this end, really. Um, another thing, too, some people might wonder why the handle's fairly long. It works really well to use your forearm to support it if you're mixing heavy materials. If it's a little short whisk, your wrist has got to, wrist has got to take all the load. But if, if it's long enough to put your arm against it, it just makes it a bit easier. Right, now we'll cut a bit of this pipe. Before we cut it, it's easier to get one end ready while you've got something to hang on to and then you've got to make sure that there's no burrs on the inside like that and it's also while you've got something to hang on to it's a good time to clean it up the bit you want Finer sandpaper. It, in use, it will just wear off and stay shiny anyway, so you don't ever need to worry about this again. And you, you can use any kind of pipe you like too. This is convenient. You might use the end of a curtain rod or. Uh, <laughs> Just whatever you can find, as long as it's it's solid pipe and welded together. Yeah, probably not anything. Not anything that's got a split in it, you know. No, yeah. But Copper's <laughs> nice though, because it's 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 a good. Copper food. is about the best choice. Yeah. But you could use steel or brass or stainless yeah. steel. Yeah. Wouldn't matter if you've got a bit of a shower curtain rail lying around. That's fine. Now. We do the same with the copper, not, not that it needs to be measured. I'll make it slightly less than the 20 mil. Yeah, that's about 18, but it, it's not critical at all. But it's, it's easier to make this a little bit shorter than what you've filed down because it's easier to trim the wood than it is the copper when you put them together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just line up the mark of the vice again. One little tip when you're cutting metal with a fine, you've got to use a fine toothed hacksaw blade too, where it'll grab and it'll be very difficult to cut. Um, just rub a bit of soap. I'm using beeswax on the blade and it just goes so much better. Mm. Now here's another little little trick. You can't really hold the, if you've got a bench grinder or something or, or sander, you can do that, clean it up on there, but we're looking at, at the basic ways to do it. And if you don't want to do your fingernails at the same time, you got an old bolt. This is just to hold it so you save your fingernails. Yeah. Clamp that in the vise. And, and set up the nut so that it's ah. the bolt is just below the surface and then you can just that is so clever file it without giving yourself a manicure Right, now the round file again, just 
take the burrs out. Once we've got this on, I'm we'll drill a hole in here to put the whisk wires into. But this doesn't need to be glued on. If it's a good tight fit, you can just hammer it on when you're ready. And because it's a bit shorter than the wood, if you adjust the jaws of the vice just to Just, just to, to sit on the cop a bit. Down. Oh, that's smart. Right. Then you can put that back in the vice and use your file and. Ah, oh, right. This is a lot better than trying to get it precisely right when you cut it. file it so it doesn't have to be flat looks nicer it's a little bit rounded there we are that looks pretty good now the tricky bit next is to put the right size hole in the middle of that the easiest way to find the middle put it on a flat bench find something that's roughly half as wide as the ferrule and stick that on the bench and then just draw a line then rotate it a little bit and draw another line rotate it a bit more and you draw about four or five lines whatever takes your fancy and then you can see that would have been better if that was a little bit thicker, but it's okay, it gives you an indicator of where the middle of the handle is to start your drill. Oh, while I add it, I'll just round off this back edge of the handle. This will be a good project for men's sheds and women's sheds and yep. you know anyone who wants to make craft handmade tools kitchen tools this will be a really good one yeah and if, if you, you know, don't hesitate to use all the modern conveniences if you've got a workshop mm. of course this as i said is showing the minimalist way of doing it Right, don't worry about sanding the rest of it down yet because um, you've got to handle it and work with it for a good bit and you can do all that after it's finished. Now, drilling the hole is a wee bit tricky. So in the centre of the little uh, shape you've made there with your lines, just get a punch. And put a little little dent that'll give you a, a better chance of starting off with the drill in the right place like a pilot little pilot yeah dent. it's just a center punch yeah now another trick we're going to later on we'll make the wires these as practice runs we'll make these bits that go into the handle about inch and a half long or 38 40 millimeters Yep. So, so that you don't drill a hole too shallow or too deep, if you get your drill and a little bit of tape of any sort, and because we're going to drill an inch and a half, we go just a little bit more. Uh, 
and just wrap a bit of tape around it. And that, when when that goes up to the end of the thing, you know you've got the hole the right depth. Now the other thing that is most important, when you're trying to drill a hole in the middle of this, you can only look at one plane at a time. So I can tell that it's going straight side by side. Have somebody else standing on the side and say up a bit or down a bit. Yep. So Ellie can do that for me. That's straight? Uh, you could go up a tiny bit. Yep. Yeah, that looks uh, good. Maybe okay. up a tiny bit more. Yep. Okay. Up the time of it now. That'll do. It, it's not super critical, but you don't want to be too far off because once you've got the wires all glued in, you can adjust them. Okay, so that's basically the handle. Now for the wire to make the whisk, the critical bit, the best I've found is stainless steel, of course, because it's easy to clean. And the best source of little bits of stainless steel wire I've found are um, welding electrodes. These are two and a half millimeter stainless steel welding electrodes. And they're the right length, so you don't even have to trim them. Excellent. So and we had a talk about stainless steel and food safe materials and you and yeah. we, you sort of decided that it would be as safe as any other stainless steel. Oh, you know, absolutely. because it's a very inert. This you could make this whisk out of a bit of fencing wire if it's the right size. Yeah. Um, two and a half millimeters seems to be a good size. It's strong enough while still being bendable. If you end up with three millimetre, you'll never bend no, it. No, it's too thick. It's yep. too thick. Yeah. And, and the way to turn them in to a whisk instead of a welding rod, you just belt them to get all the flux off. Wow. And the flux, is that like just the ignition sort of? That, that, that forms a an air excluding um, space around the weld so it doesn't oxidize. Right. Mm. So, so we're going to need two of these. It comes off easily. It does. Yeah, it's not a big deal, apart from the mess. Right. I'll just sweep this before it goes. That's all the ones I've been practicing with. <laughs> Bits of sandpaper. Put it on a bit of wood's the easiest. That saves you sanding off the bench top or whatever. I can't stop thinking about Norman in New York State. He's going to love this. Hi, Norm, if you're watching. <laughs> All right. The, um, the electrodes, you should be able to buy in small quantities from any welding supply shop. Yeah, the local uh, home builders centre or something in their workshop section, they would have them probably. If not, just... Look on the internet for your local area and get a welding supplies place and yep. go and buy 10 stainless steel electrodes, 2.5 millimetres. But get more than two mm. because there's a fair <laughs> chance that you'll be like me <laughs> and have a few. few um, and you, yeah, you might want to experiment with experiment. your design. <laughs> yeah, they don't always work exactly how you'd want them to. But if you've got patience and a persistent, you'll get a good looking, good functioning. And probably not everybody, some people will be more interested in function. Oh, some yeah. Some people will want it to be 
perfectly symmetrical, so. Yep. It's, just, it's nice to have it looking nice and to have the proportions right. Yeah, yep. Right. Now, we have to mark this so we know what we're doing. Just get a permanent marker is a good thing. To keep control of the size and shape, we need to mark it an inch and a half from each end. That's where the thing's going to get bent. And we also need to mark the middle. And when you mark them, just mark them all the way around. It's often aids with finding what you're looking for. So it's inch and a half from each end. I've only done about 20 experiments to prove <laughs> that. <laughs> that is. And one in the middle. Now, you don't have to be millimetre perfect with these, but the closer you get it, the better chance you got. Right. Now, making the, the wires, you can see that the outside one is very simple and a nice one to make. The beautiful heart in the middle is a different story. I've tried a few different techniques and the one I've come up with is is about as good as I can find so far. So go ahead and make them and see what happens. Now just clamp these in the vise at the inch and a half mark and just put a sharp kink in them. Doesn't have to be any specific angle, but somewhere around 30 degrees will do. Just make sure they both go in the same direction. Now, as I said, the big one's easy. For, for forming these, you need a few bits of round stuff. Bit, bits of pipe, old bolts, uh, and a big bit of pipe over here I've discovered is pretty close to the one we need to make the outer ring. The centre mark, hold that on the pipe. And these. What, what size pipe is that, roughly? This is about two inch. Yeah. It's a nominal two inch, I think it measures about. And you've just got that clamped to the bench. That's just clamped in the vise to hold yeah. it at a yeah. working height. Uh, it's pretty hard if they're not fixed, you know. Mm. What it, and if they're fixed vertically, it's the best. Yep. And pipe's better than a solid rod because you can clamp it. Clamp it. So you clamp it in the centre. So you clamp it the centre of it onto the pipe with the. Um, The little bent bits facing away from you. And then, very simply. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. And you have to pull it past where you. Oh, yeah. You can change the curves and the shapes a bit. To get, have a look at the shape you're going to end up with, pull the two bends together. And that's what you're going to end up with when it's finished, okay? So, and you want them to, you, you won't get them to stay no. right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then go back to the vise and bend these a little bit more. And the way you can tell where to bend them to is to pull the other one over until the things line up mm. and that's got to go yeah go you through the center the line yeah oh. oh 
was wondering how you did that. <laughs> so that's it. And, you know, you're going to manipulate this all over the place before you're finished. But that's it. And it. It's good that it's got some tension on because that makes it... It'll hold it in. It just slips into the handle with a bit of glue and it's... Ah! Ah! <laughs> Okay, so Ooh. that's the easy one. This one is a bit trickier. You need to start with a little bit of pipe if you can get it, or a bolt or something. So this is for the center loop. This is the, the heart yeah, we're the, going to make yeah, now. Yeah. Now, when you're... That's, that's what he's making now. This is the center yeah. heart shape. Now, don't worry, this is going to get pushed and pulled around a fair bit. It's all by guess and by God. <laughs> yeah. So then you pull it round. Easier to do one side at a time. And that looks like a fairly good place to start. That's the centre of your heart. Now it changed. I found this bit of pipe worked fairly well for the rest. You all could right. be lucky and fluke this straight away and have it all done in a minute. Or you could spend an hour with a <laughs> pair of pliers. Yeah. So don't worry. It'll, it goes either way for anyone. <laughs> this is the tricky bit. Now we've got to bend these around to form the outer mm. part of the heart shape. If you have a look at it, it's not a, a one radius. It, mm. it grows yeah. as it turns. Yeah. So that's where the art comes into it. If you hold it, something with a nice square end on it and hold the um, thing like that and clamp it on the inside of the heart side onto this piece of pipe. These little vice grips, if you haven't got them, they're a good investment for a million other things and they're nearly essential in doing this. Right, now, we can start pulling this around and pushing it back. Mm. I see what you're doing. Oh, look you, at that. You've got to push it back to get the... Um, to open. Yeah, I know it's just... Yeah. This has been a, a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that doesn't always happen. <laughs> that does not always happen. You did it. Then there's, there's, you've got to straighten it all up. They're not going to go in the handle. No. And it is also good to have a gap in here. If you notice in, in this one, big gap. Oh, yeah. That makes it easy to clean. Yes. And I think it helps it work as well. Now, so to make that, you just... Ah, uh, just open it up a bit. Just open it up a bit. Ah. Well, that's... Bit of gentle persuasion. Yeah. Not so gentle. It's not easy to bend this stuff. It's easy enough to bend, you know, in, in basic terms, but trying to adjust these curves, mm. you can't do it with just your fingers. So you just keep playing with this until... How strong is this wire in terms of, could you bend it too much on one of those sharp angles and break it? No. No. Okay. 
when you've got this far, it's then time you slip both those ends in the handle and both these bits in the handle. Yeah. They're a fairly tight fit, but that's how you want them. Now, that's not bad, but this is too wide. Oh, I see. That, that heart needs to be a bit narrower yep. and a bit taller. Yep. This is where the fun begins. These slip joint pliers are pretty handy too because, you see, we can actually aff afford to squeeze that centre bit a bit more like that, make it a bit smaller. And then we'll bend that a bit more and straighten that a bit. The trick is that you want to end up those, those bends coming together and have a presentable, nice shape. And that doesn't look too bad. So we'll stick it back in here and see how it goes with the general. Pattern of things. Still too wide. That doesn't look too bad. Looks great. Okay. Yep. Now, one other thing you'll notice on Ellie's and, and on mine, they don't aren't all in the same plane. You can't get the heart shape in the same plane really well, but I, do, I think it works better when it is offset a bit. Yeah, the Danish dough whisks that you buy online, they're not perfectly... No, they're not flat. No. And you can set that up to wherever you want it when we put the glue it all together. Now, that, if you're happy with that shape, and I am, I think, Yeah. that looks fairly good to me. I think that's good. All you've got to do is glue it up. Yeah. Wait yeah. till the glue dries. And when it's finished, 24 hours, use a high-strength epoxy glue which we'll do in a second, and then set it up vertically. Just hold it lightly in the vise once the glue's in. And then you can manipulate this to where you want it. And it doesn't have to be critical because once the glue's gl the glue is dry, excuse me, you can still manipulate the wire. You can bend it out a bit, yeah. straighten it up a bit more. And that's the that's about it. Okay. We'll get some glue. Get a bit of glue and we're done. Yeah. Okay, this is an experimental one after bending about twelve bits of wire and seeing how difficult it was to make that heart shape, I thought I if people are deterred by that, I thought it'd be easy to make one with three loops. Mm. Just like different sizes of the first big loop which took seconds to do yeah so that's a lot easier so on ellie's um data page there will be lengths to cut these wires great and diameters of bits of pipe to bend them around and the rest of it's exactly the same except the hole has to be i think it was seven mil five sixteenths of an inch eight mil because it's got six wires in it yeah. instead of four yep <sighs> My favourite glue mixer is a paddle pop stick. 
An ice cream stick. Ice cream stick, yeah. <laughs> and you need to make, cut one down thin enough to reach down into the hole. Ah, to prise, to get the glue in the hole. Yeah, you've got to have one that'll right. go in yep. there. Yeah. And what sort of glue are you using? I'm using uh, the trade name for it, brand name is Araldite. Mm -hmm. It's a 50-50 uh, yep. mix of two parts, epoxy resin and a hardener. Yeah. It comes in watered down versions as well. Pick the high strength one. The best one you can buy. It's not all that expensive in little tubes like this. I think at one point I asked you about food safety of using yeah. epoxy glue. I, I don't really know. But it's been used countless millions of times to, to fix things. I've got a wooden spoon in the kitchen that was araldited together 20 years ago and it's still there and yeah. still functioning. And you're yeah. not soaking the whiskey in your food, you're just using it for a minute and then you're cleaning it off. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. yeah. Epoxy resins used to do everything from build boats to fix a million household items, you know. Yeah. Um, it's um, Once it's gone off, it's probably once pretty... Once it's cured, it's pretty well inert Yeah. and, and it's and it's pretty well proof to anything. It's it's even proof to osmosis. You, mm. you know, now if you build a boat out of epoxy resin, you cannot get any degradation by osmosis, which is the the atomic inclusions of moisture. Wow. Uh, so that's the resin. You don't need too much because the hole's full of wire. Mm. You just need something to glue it all together. And it takes 24 hours to cure, so there's no rush for working with it either. Mm -hmm. uh, equal amounts, resin and hardener. Really good mix-up. This is a messy, tricky bit. That's why I have this little stick. Push it to the bottom of the hole and wipe the glue off. Now I have no idea exactly how much I'm going to need and I tend to be generous and put plenty in because it's not hard to clean off the outside once you put the wires in. I think that will do the job. Now, you put the heart in first. And then the outer one. Got it. Pretty good. It's just starting to ooze out the top. A little bit more. And this remains fluid for a long time. That's why you've got a probably a good idea to coat the end in epoxy too. Seals the wood. This also has the advantage of, of filling it the little tricky areas where stuff would get, you know, food stuff mm. would get caught, you know, and stay there. Now, that's not exactly straight at the moment, but don't try and do anything about it at the moment. If you need to do a bit of a glue clean up, methylated spirits and a paper towel works a treat. Just leave that 24 hours. While I'm at it, I'll clean the glue off this mixing board. That'll do. 
Now, after 24 hours, when this glue is all dried, then with a small file or bit of sandpaper, if you've put a burr on the stainless steel wire with the pliers or something, just sand them off, smooth them all out, and then you can do any minor shape changes and it's quite a lot easier to do when the wires are captive in the handle. Uh, and if it leans a bit one side, well, you just bend it and straighten it up. And then when it's you're happy with that, just a bit of fine sandpaper and sand the dowel, rub it down with some vegetable oil, olive oil, sunflower oil, doesn't matter which. Just put some oil into the wood and uh, you've got a whisk. Fantastic. Excellent. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Well, that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Oh, that's all right. That was brilliant. If and I... it's easier than I thought it was. Well, it's not a complicated thing. And, and the, I think the value I might have been able to add is the tips on techniques for cutting a bit of pipe yeah. straight and yeah. so on and so forth. And the availability of the stainless steel welding yeah. wire. Yeah. Um, I hit on that by accident when I made my own mm. and, and Ellie's. Yeah. So. Brilliant. Anyway, it, it's simple, it's not all that hard, and by gee, they work well. They sure do, they sure do. All yeah. right, well, thank you very much for That's your time right. and for doing this. <laughs> okay. I hope you're watching this, Cindy and Norman and everybody who's <laughs> interested. Um, cool, thanks, okay. Dad. All right, all right. That's it, bye. everyone. See ya.